Howdy y'all, this is Twitchonium here. Today I'm coming at y'all with another quick draft for March of the Machine. Go ahead and jump right on in and see if we open something spicy. Well, Sea Double's pretty cool. I like being in blue, so this gives me a really good reason to just start there. Try to maybe force it a little bit. Not really any other good blue cards in this pack. I mean, Meeting of Minds is, is definitely solid and I would play it, but not like first pickable, but... This lets you copy your opponent's best spell and best creature, or one or the other, potentially, depending. But worst case, this is four mana instant speed, make the best creature on the board, so I think we'll go ahead and uh, snatch that up. And now we can take the Invasion, which is probably the stronger card here, or we could take the Realm Breaker's Grasp, knowing that blue pairs well with white. And that's one thing we would want if we end up in that color, but... A C-double also can't be copied, which is a pretty big nombo with the the mage ring side of the invasion. Maybe I do just want to take, like, Realm Breaker's Grasp. Pretty unexciting pack overall. Yeah, just take the removal and see. Well, nothing good blue here. I mean, the, the Omen Hawker can do good work if you just have a ton of ways to use the mana, but I've only really had that come together once. I think the green cards here are the best ones. Probably take the uh, Herbology Instructor. Although, Invasion's not bad either. But I think the two drop that can flip over and remove something later is the better option there. Okay, now we can take Meeting of the Mines, Thalid, Storm the Seed Core. Could take a Surveyor if we just want to make sure we can hit whatever colors we do end up playing. I think Seed Core is the most exciting here, and it pairs with the Instructor. And now we get a Renata. It's either that or Cut Short. And green is looking pretty open here. Still not sure what color to pair it with. None of these are exciting. I mean, even the green's not all that, that great. I guess we'll take the Falls here. Just in case we don't end up blue-green, maybe we need it to splash, or even if we do end up in blue-green, we've already got a lot of double-pipped cards that we want to make sure we can hit. Interesting. Huntmaster is pretty strong, but I don't think I want to take it over an on-color card that's pretty strong as well. Both of these are great. I don't know if I want two seed cores, but man, does this thing just do a ton of work when you get to cast it. I guess I'll take the first invasion just to diversify the deck a little bit and have access to more effects. Yikes. I don't want any of these, really. I mean, maybe we play a Rotten Tail? If we get get there on the, like, plus one counter synergies? Um, This is not exciting. None of these cards are all that great. I guess, again, we're going to take a land just in case. All right, so we are green and something. Ooh, that's a good wheel. Take the Wary Thespian and the Ancient in this pack. Okay. Uh, another fine two drop. Traxxas Fall is playable. Okay, so. Wow. Okay, yeah, we're just green. Maybe we just go mono green even. Ozolith is nasty. We've already got one, two... Maybe just two. Well, two good ways to add counters to stuff, and now we can start picking up more. I think white does pair best with green in the counter strategy. But I don't really think I want to, like, pack two, pick two a uh, Sanctifier here. Really, there's nothing great for us either way, though, so I guess we will take that. We could still go blue-green... But this guy is really meh. It's just a, a big butt blocker most of the time. Yeah, we'll take the, the white spell and see where we end up. Well, Aurelia is a house, but I don't think I want to shift that hard here. Let's take the Negotiator. Intercessor's pretty good. I think I'd probably actually take this over the Negotiator in this case because we have a bunch of two drops already. But we don't know that we're playing white yet, and this has counter synergies. Plus, it's just a sweet 2-drop if you get to drop it on curve, too. 
Okay, it's looking like white's probably the option here. Seal from existence is a great little piece of interaction in white. Exile whatever you need. Hmm. Invasion pretty good if we had ended up in that deck. I guess Bolus Slinger has a backup ability, comes with a counter. Could also go with Blighted Burgeoning. But I think I'd rather have a creature here. And it's definitely looking like we're going to be going white-green. Ooh, this is a tricky one. Both the Intercessor and the Sailback are pretty sweet. Having access to Artifact and Enchantment Hate is nice. This can just exile a creature, though. I think we'll just take the, the bigger guy. And now, I'm, I'm actually a pretty big fan of the Cavalier. I feel like the first strike ends up being more relevant than you expect it would be, but two bodies on a single creature is pretty nice. Ooh, and a tandem takedown this late. Get some more removal in the deck. Grab a tracker, or, or a escort rather. I don't know why Wildwood Tracker is what I always think of when I see this card. But get a little bit of a graveyard recursion into the deck. Well, we definitely want a three drop. Do we want the, fl the flyer? I don't think we have many knights. Yeah, just one, but we also don't have like any incubator tokens. So I guess I'd rather have a 3-3 if we go that route. Ooh, we got the uh, the other Intercessor back. I'm pretty happy about that. Well, if we get enough of these guys, they can be their own triggers. <laughs> oh, wow. Getting some good stuff late here, too. We're not going to have a problem filling out the deck, that's for sure. Wow. First time I think I've opened a Breach the Multiverse. I'd really like to, to build a deck around this card, but don't think we're going to be pivoting that hard here in pack three unfortunately really bad pack overall for us there's like no white or green cards that are exciting i guess the two drop yeah really really weak pack there another grasp here is pretty good uh once again not a lot of exciting stuff do we want a five drop or a one drop i think we want a five drop that puts a counter and gives us flying Potentially a uh, win condition in this deck if we don't end up with uh, too many other ways. Well, I guess. I mean, I could take another Escort here, but I don't think I'm going to play two. So, hmm, actually. We have three six drops in the deck, potentially. And worst case, Amodi does Cascade herself, and we have this Thornwood Falls already. This Tranquil Cove already, and a Blighted Burgeoning we can run. Plus, these guys help help get lands and stuff too, so I'm, I'm tempted to potentially run an Emoti in this deck. Another Grasp is sweet, though. Ooh. This is a tricky one. Okay, let's pull out all of our removal here real quick. Or just, I guess not necessarily removal, but spells non-creature spells. Eh, this one's ramp. I'm going to leave that one for now. Uh, this is like a creature and a removal. Okay, so tandem take, or not tandem take down. Atraxus fall we can cut for sure. Uh, these five are all excellent removal. We're not removing that. And storm the seed core just is a nice synergy piece with the deck, so I think we're keeping that. One... Two. These two I both like a lot. Ozolith is for sure staying. Blade Bastard's a maybe. Instructor's staying. Sunder's probably staying. I guess this has kind of got some plus one counter synergies, but man, is this an unexciting card. So I do think we cut one. Let's just keep the, the guy that kind of has synergies with the deck. Oh wait, I got rid of the instructor for some reason. Oh no, this is this pick. Ha ha ha. I'm thinking I uh, cut this guy from the deck already. Okay, so two drops are pretty much set. So I don't think we actually need to focus on the two drops anymore. Might play one more, but not necessary, that's for sure. Not a fan of either of these guys, really. So three drops might not be the worst. Of course, none of these are three drops. Uh, Invasion seems like a maybe in this deck. I don't know that we really need the ramp. 
the knight I like. I like the bullet slinger just because it has that the backup ability. I think we're gonna need to play as many of those as we can. So we still need two cuts if we're running it like this. That's crazy. Oh no, I guess these two are, are included. So right now this is the deck. So anything we add, we're gonna need to cut something. Uh, I think I like the Kavu actually here over another 1-3. Maybe I just take another Wary Thespian and cut the, uh, where was it? This guy, the Guardian. Yeah, I think I'd rather have the, the better 2-drop. Wow, another Grasp here. I mean, we got an entire playset of them. I think we're going to run them. It's another Thespian or another Aeronaut. I mean, I'm really in love with these Thespians. Three power that surveils you twice, potentially. Ooh, we might run that little one drop, actually. Okay, I don't think we're going to run that one drop, though. Ooh, that intervention will probably run, though. So, interesting pool of cards here. We've got a lot of options. I think we're probably going to cut the Emoti Splash just to, to make the, the mana better in the deck. Yeah, no reason to try the Splash if we don't need it. Okay, we have got a bunch of options here, though. We really need to cut some two drops. Four copies of that. Takedown. Takedown might actually be a cut in this deck just because we've got so much other removal, but I mean, I feel like cutting any removal is just hard to, to justify. I think we can cut both of the burgeonings, though. That leaves us with no three drops, but I mean, we've got enough one and two drops to, to have something to do, or cyclers we can be playing on two as well a lot of the time. How many creatures does this leave us with? 16? I think I'm okay cutting Sunder. Maybe one Escort. And the Bond Warden. We don't have a ton of counter synergies besides the Ozolith and Renata and the Seed Core, but I mean, Ozolith by itself is just a house because it can put the counters on stuff. Renata, same thing. She's just a house by herself because she's putting counters on all your creatures. Same with Storm the Seed Core, really, I guess. Like, all three of these are just good standalone cards, so we don't really need the, the plus one counter synergies to be the main focus of the deck. And we've got some just excellent, excellent interaction in the deck here. I feel like I'm missing a piece. Oh, it's the Intercessors. These guys are kind of like removal, too. So that we should have a, a fair amount of control for this these color pairs. Which is a little unusual for green-white, but we'll go ahead and see how it runs. I'll see you all in the first round. Welcome to round one, y'all. We are on the draw with a questionable starting hand. We do technically have all the mana we need to get to Renata. And then we can start dropping down creatures afterwards, but we're doing nothing until then. I'm going to keep it, but this is probably a, a bad choice. Instantly, it pays off. <laughs> of course, now we're just going to only draw planes for like the next five turns or whatever. Aw, okay, that's fair. I guess I'd rather them counterspell the random two drop than our Renata. Okay, they get a one two, that's not bad. We are gonna be leaving Renata a bit open, but if yeah, if they're having to plane cycle, they looks like they might be hurting on their lands. They're also in blue white and have not shown a uh What's it called yet? A knight. But if we can untap with Renata still up here, we'll be in pretty good shape. We have protection for her. We have two creatures in one that'll both come in with counters. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Now we'll get two three threes on board, which is pretty great. I think we'll go ahead and swing first. 
a little bad not keeping the intervention up here, I think, but I'd rather just play the two three threes out. Like, this is six power and toughness for four, which is pretty great. And if we top deck a land, we can drop a big old trampler. Alright, there's a knight. Interesting. Okay, I think we're gonna gum this one up first, because we have two. And then we'll go ahead and swing for the fences. Hope that they pop this to try and block Renata, and then we take it down. Protection from colorless. And there we go. Now whatever they play, we can gum it up too and then keep hitting for nine. And they're going to go ahead and call it. Awesome. Great little start from our Selesnia deck. See y'all in the next round. Welcome back to game two, y'all. We are on the draw again with a much better starting hand here. Oh, I say much better. We do need to draw a couple of lands, but we have the Ancient to get there if we really are struggling. But we've got some excellent uh, two drops and and such here. I'm going to save the uh, Negotiator for later, because I'd rather trade off with uh, Thespians early. This guy's scary. Yeah, we'll keep the land. I'm going to make all of their Phyrexians into 3-3s. Three Alright, and they get a Knight as well. And I think we're just going to keep dropping three ones. That, ooh. Yeah, I mean, I really want to land, but I think we may just cycle the, the dude next turn here. Let's keep swinging for three. This is fine. Yep. Alright, let's see if they want to trade... Phyrexian for a Thespian. They do not. Uh, this is interesting. Yeah, let's do the guy first. Get another forest. Drop that. I think we drop the 3-3 three, three now, actually. No reason to play these yet. We can just keep on hanging tight. I feel like we're in pretty good shape here. They're a red-white deck, which is going to be very aggro creature, want to attack kind of focused, and we've already kind of gummed up the board and slowed down their aggression. Oh my, they are going all for it here. All right, well, they've definitely got a trick of some sort, or else this is just a really bad attack. Yeah, that's fine. I'll get another token out of it, but not the end of the world. That's a little worse for us. Still not terrible though, really. Ooh, Renata, yes please. Four, this is gonna make it so that they can get through next turn. Two, three, four, so we need to, basically need to stop both of these guys right now. Which is a bit of a shame, because these are not the kind of creatures I want to, to be using these on, but I really can't afford to have them flip this right now and buff their entire team. Well, now it's gonna happen no oh yeah it automatically shoots over there that makes sense so now we get to uh gum up the raptor this turn and then we're gonna eat some damage but it's all right we can renata into hopefully a land for the escort the turn after to get something back Ooh, i'm glad they used that before we got renata oh they're gonna use it to get their raptor back i guess that makes sense yeah, this raptor's going to be a big problem. Big, big problem. Well, at least now we can trade. And I'm really regretting using these removals on these dudes now. 
since they were able to flip this anyways. Another one, wow. Opponent has a very uh, synergistic uh, deck here. But now they're going to start spitting out 3-3s three each turn, or 2-3-3s three this turn at least. Oh, they're 5-5s, four, four, five, right. Not sure why it gets the extra one. Oh, it's getting an extra from this, right. Yikes. So, this is a loss, unfortunately. Just crazy, they had all the... Uh, the two for ones there, and then the right answers for our removal. That is one of the downsides of using white removal spells is that, by and large, they're all going to be kind of aura-based pacifism effects that are much more easy to interact with. But you take what you can get in the colors you're in. So see you all in the next round. Welcome to round three, y'all. We are on the draw yet again with another fine hand. Definitely keep this one. It's a little land-heavy, but I'd rather that than the alternative where we can't cast our spells. Alright, yep. Actually, I think I'm going to just play two greens first, just to make sure I have the mana for takedown. And Renata, which would be nice. They can pump this guy up, I do need to try and keep that in mind. But right now they can only pump it up by one, so we should be okay for this turn at least. Ooh, or not. They are going to give it Death Touch, so we'll let it through for now. Interesting. I think I will go ahead and use this. And just keep the tempo going. Awkwardly a bit of a Nambo with our negotiator, because we don't get the extra uh, power in our attack, but I think it's still worth it there. I don't want this guy to, to die, because... When he dies, he gets to make another creature, so we'll put the, the Realm Breaker's grasp, excuse me, grasp on him. Um, I think I am going to offer this trade first while they have their Death Toucher here. Because I don't want to have to like try and trade it off with Renata or anything. And this is just a 2-drop. Yeah, I think we'll just keep playing it, playing it slow. I don't want to just drop Renata onto that board with a 3-4 and a Death Toucher. Alright, burgeoning. And a Phoenix, nice. Can't block though, which is worth noting. Now we'll just start dropping our creatures down. One after another. If we hit a land, we can double spell or... Intercessor next turn, which would be sweet. Be a nice way to get rid of the Phoenix. Or even just a token so it doesn't come back. But two creatures would be ideal to go with Renata to get the, the most value out of that. Oh my, that's a scary, scary card. I don't even know what to, to do here. I think we have Thespian so we can Surveil. Yikes. Yeah, I think we just need another land. Or a piece of removal. No attacks. I can actually double block plus save Renata with this. So I think I'm okay with this, actually. If they swing. Because that makes 8. As long as they don't have any kind of tricks. I mean, either way, we get to save Renata because this gives protection from green. Or can. Let's see if they've got something. Okay. They definitely have something, so this is a little scary. Alright, 
and we are officially toast now. We'll see what the surveil shows, but I think we're probably going to just concede after this. We're going to be eating 8 here with an 8-8 Trampler Ward 2, unless we literally hit the the 2-drop aura that can lock this up. We are dead. And even then, we're already just one shy. Well, that can handle the dude, but we're at 1 if they don't have... All right, here we go. If they have a way to save it, then we just never had it. Like they've got like a Traxxas fall for this thing immediately or something. Yeah, so a trick we're dead, a haste creature we're dead. We have to top deck a land to survive here one more turn. Or we're just dead. Brutal. I feel like we were holding on good there for a little while until they uh, dropped the the busted bomb rare there that wins games. Rats, see you all in the next round. Welcome back for round number four. We are on the play this time and a pretty decent looking starting hand here. We'll find out if we go one and three yet again here today. I feel like this deck has more potential than what it's been showing off. The uh, the draws have just not been uh, kind to us. Like, I don't think we've drawn Ozolith a single game so far, and that's by far the best card in our deck. Yeah, we've come up against the, you know, the Bomb Raptor, Hasty Raptor guy, the... Oh, what's the other one that we just fought against? The 8-8 Trample Convoke guy that gets huge. So, just rough. And they immediately had removal for our two drop sad times get our bola slinger going though and we've definitely got the the means to lock up their board if this guy can just keep getting in looks like they're going to remove him though yep yeah i guess we're just chilling these draws have been abysmal just land, 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 land. I regret keeping the land on turn two, but I mean, how do you know that you're going to keep drawing into them, you know? I think we'll just use this guy. I don't really want to use him on an Iker Shade, but I, we just need a body on the board here. And we still have some backup interaction options. Let's see what kind of crazy stuff they play. Of course. And yet more lands, also, of course. All right, and a scab. It's going to get them back their removal spell. One of their removal spells. Yep. more lands. I'm gonna not, because uh, they, they want to get their Iker Shade back with this thing, but they'd have to sack their Scab or one of these, I'm assuming, creatures to do it, so. I'll offer up the Thespian here in case they want to try and use it as a minus two minus two instead of minus six minus six. But we really need them to use that first before we grasp something or else they can just sack it. This guy can still block, oddly enough. Try and make him use it now to get the double kill here. Okay, cool. Now I feel, f well, not fine, but a little better about using the grasp. Ooh, and we got a takedown too as a backup removal option. That's pretty good. 
Yeah, in fact, we're just going to use that first. Get rid of the scab and start trying to swing in. Super, uh... What's the right word? Not exciting is, is what I'm getting at. This game has not been a, uh, a great one. Just both sides so much... Uh, so many lands. Pretty happy with the cards we have in hand, though. At least we can protect the guy that we've got, and they're incentivized to use any interaction they have on him as soon as they draw it. Wow. We're 11 lands in so far? Yeah. A little crazy. Oh, well, now we get to save our guy and keep them from getting theirs back. Oh, well, that's a pretty sweet draw. Biggest creature in our deck. They have two removal spells, it seems. Oh, okay. Just a tempo play. And we've still got a piece of removal. Whew, that one was a dirty one, but managed to get there in the end. See y'all in the next round. Welcome to round five, y'all. We are on the play with another pretty reasonable starting hand here. A little slow, but we at least have ways to keep drawing lands if we don't hit them. Or we're just going to keep hitting lands like we did last game. Draw like ten in a row. At least we have some big stuff to play if that happens. Better than the alternative. <laughs> oh, I jinxed myself. On the plus side, our two drop does hit for three, which is, is pretty nice. So at least we can start getting in for some, some solid damage here. We'd love to draw anything we can play next turn. We, we do unfortunately have a lot of four drops that require two green though, so this is a little awkward with the lands we've drawn. We have tons of removal for that though, hopefully that's not one of them. Next turn we'll give our lifelinker a counter in flying, I think. And hope they don't play two spells here. Interesting. Well, counter spell. Yep. Fair enough. Guessing they have another piece of removal here. Yep. So they can make a, uh, a knight to block our guy with. Brutal. It's unfortunate that we started off with such a bad set of draws there. Makes the... Uh, the removal feel a lot more impactful. At least our intercessor can get rid of the the strobe knight. E or the guardian nasty. I mean the the strobe knight's the scarier card at this point, but I'm hoping that they're not going to be able to cast too many more double spell turns. Might should have played this guy first. E yeah, okay, well. Looks like this is going to be the end of our run, unfortunately. Yeah, they'll be able to flip this and have another huge flyer. Sure, sure. <sighs> now we have to get rid of the 7-7. Seven, seven. And eat 3-5... I think we're just dead next turn. I don't think we have anything. I guess this guy can block a... Uh...
can block a flyer. I can't block even because then we lose the intercessor and they get back the huge flyer. Yep. So we play this and die. We play. I guess we can. Nah, we're just dead. At least we get to see what our next card is. Land. Eh, that would have been a sweet draw earlier in the game. Brutal. So, turns out blue-white, which I knew was crazy strong, is crazy strong. So, y'all might see me uh, forcing blue a little harder than I have been in these matches. I really wanted to try out some of these... Uh, you know, crazy interactions and, and splashy things you can do in this format, but the more I've played it, the more it feels like blue is just the, the way to go. If you can get into a deck that has blue in it, you're just uh, already off on the right foot. I mean, I've had some blue decks that have stumbled as well, don't get me wrong, but most of my best decks I feel like have had blue in them, particularly blue-black, so Let's see if we can't uh, maybe force a, a deck that has uh, blue into it next time. We even first picked the uh, the C double, just never had any uh, follow ups to support it. So, oh well, still a fun little sh uh, deck to try and give it a shot with. Would have loved to see some cooler uh, Ozolith Renata shenanigans, but we only drew Renata like once or twice. Never really got to make great use of our seed core. Didn't see the Ozolith a single game. Uh, didn't see the instructor very much. Same with Seal. I think we saw it once, and then right there at the very end, it would have been our next draw. Yeah. It's just weird how that works. Like, sure, we've got four copies of this, three copies of this, and two copies of this, so they're more likely to show up, but even that aside, the other cards, it didn't feel like we saw an even distribution of them, but it is what it is. Appreciate you all coming along on this ride here with me today, and I will see you all in the next draft video. Take care, everybody.